how old are you now? 86. 86? Yeah. 86? 86. Did you come in here on a stretcher or a wheelchair? Uh, actually, I was driven here by my son, who has a new okay. Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't drive anymore. Nice. And so, 86. Yeah. Any regrets? Oh, yeah. But well, I can't remember them. <laughs> nice. That's right. No, I don't. No, no. I, I, look at me. I, I, in fact, people say to me, you know, uh, because now when I, when I get asked to do, you know, to talk, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of times they remember my comedic days, you know. Right. But I'm too old to do TNA jokes, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And so, so now... If I'm going to talk, I, I like to leave something of substance. You know, it's like yeah. someone begging. You know, you don't want to just give them uh, empty, emptiness. You know, right. give them something they can use. And so I always, uh, I, I, I went very spiritual because I, I, in, in my travels and I, I've learned the secret. See, uh, it started off with with jazz. And uh, I had a jazz player one time give me a, a book. It was called The Third Eye. And it was by T. Lobb saying Rampa. But it got me into uh, spirituality. And then, and then, like I said, my first wife was the church, you know, oh, yeah. Baptist. You Christian? Know, all the way. The first wife, Christian, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah total Christian. And then... Uh, but I started studying uh, spiritual books, uh, Course of Miracles, and there's all these, uh, I don't know if you've heard of uh, uh, Joel Goldsmith. Uh, no. Joel, Joel is a, a Jew, a New York Jew, that discovered Christianity through uh, Mary Baker Eddy, which was a church of science, uh, science uh, what's it called? Uh, it's a church, anyway. Oh, okay. It's not a, Scientology? No, oh, definitely okay. not Scientology. Oh, okay. No. So are you a Christian now? Or are you? I, I believe in Christian writings, but I've simplified everything because of people asking and, and so on, but I've simplified it to the Lord's Prayer. Everything you need to know is in the Lord's Prayer. Right. It is. But you have to dissect every word and see how powerful that word is. Absolutely. Be because when they say, in the beginning was the word, it was the word, the meaning of the word that was the beginning. Yeah. And the beginning only means the beginning of knowledge. Because we, 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 we live in an eternal uh, state. We've always been here in one form or another, but it's the mind that evolves to the point where in the beginning was the Word, and the Word is God. You see, that Word is so powerful. Hallowed be thy name. That's in the prayer. Yeah. Now that Word, hallowed be thy name, is the beginning and the end and everything right there because what it's telling you and telling us is that word has so much power used properly yeah. with faith. If you have the ability to have the faith to believe in God, because if you read further, everything good on earth was made by God. Yeah. And everything that was not made by God was not made. Amazing. And so everything on earth is good because it's made by God. That, yeah. Now, the thing that's not made by God is in our imagination yeah. because we cannot, you cannot have, in, in other words, what's the, everything has an opposite in order to exist. Like you can't have up without down. Yeah. You can't have right or right without left, you see. If you got right, you just got right. Yeah. But the opposite is the opposite. So you need opposites. Now, what gives us power 
And in the Bible it says, what is power? The belief in God is light. No, let's go physical with light. What is light? Light is the meetings of two immovable forces, negative, positive. When negative, positive, again, made by God, when they meet, because the positive can never change and always be positive, negative can only be negative. And so when they clash, they create power. They create light. Amazing. So let me ask because of time, and it's very, very interesting what you're saying. Do you have perfect peace? Do you have perfect peace? No, no one does. You don't have perfect peace? No one does. And, and why don't you have it? Because you know God, you, you understand how the mind works, and, and Christ tr- came tr- that we may have we're trying perfect to, peace. We're trying to keep our balance. Meaning what? Meaning we got gravity. See, we live in a physical world. Right. And, and you can't get away from that. Right. Yeah. But you're not your physical body, though. No, no. Because uh, So why don't you have perfect peace? Because I'm here to learn. And you only learn from your mistakes. And, and it's all, so I'm here to make mistakes. And so you believe that you have to make mistakes in order to learn. If yeah. you didn't make mistakes, you would not learn. That's right. But God, God doesn't yeah. want us to make mistakes. He made it so we wouldn't make mistakes. That's why he gave us the no, light. No. No, he gave it, us the light so no. that we would not make mistakes. Well, theoretically. But the idea, this is how you need evil. You ha- if you don't have evil, you don't have good. You need the opposite. So there will always be evil, and there will always be, be good, because they're, they're in, in the physical world. Right. You see. But now, let's talk about what's the opposite of everything? But evil. What is, what is the opposite of everything? I, I don't know what you mean. Go ahead. What is the, you know, the opposite of everything? Is what? Nothing. Okay. So if this physical world is everything, what's the opposite? Nothing. That's your spiritual world. But I, what I don't quite, and I understand some of what you're saying, but what I don't quite, do you plan to have perfect people before you die? Or do well, you, do, are well, you planning to die well, with you, not perfect people? You don't want to, you can't, and you don't want to plan. No, what I mean by that, for communication purposes, do you, do you hope to have perfect peace one day? Well, see, or do what, you, do no, you what, think, what, let me put it what, this way. First of all, what is peace? Do you peace? think that's possible to have perfect peace? Well, I guess you can have, if something stops for a moment, that's peace. Right. But that's only for a moment. But that's the whole purpose of the uh, death of the ego. You want to die from that completely. And once you die from it completely, it no longer has any, it doesn't has any, have any control over you. You no longer identify with, with it. Then you can have perfect peace. What, what does Jesus say to the cripple? Uh, do, you, do you get up and walk me? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What about that? Well, that cripple, because he knows he's crippled. Right. He needs that, that staff in order to keep him upright. At least he thinks he does. Right, he thought he did. Yeah. But when Jesus comes along and cures him and says, now you don't need that staff anymore, okay. Get up and walk, right? But let but, me ask you this. But, but that staff shows how we uh, uh, communicate with the physical world we live in. We live in a physical world. We don't live, we can, imagination, we can visit the spiritual world in our imagination, in our mind. But physically, we're in a physical world. But doesn't God, isn't God is a perfect peace? No. God is not a peace? No. Really? No. What is he of? God is everything. I know, but he's so also he's a both. peace. He's also peace. Right. But, it, but in order to have peace, you have to have chaos. So, when so God is everything. That's so, why when, when we say God is everything, and you look around at the, this is what I did when I was a, a child. 
I was taught, you know, God's everywhere. And so I walked, I walked outside that, I remember nine, nine years old or something, and I'm looking around, and said, okay, God, where are you? If you're here, where are you? And all of a sudden I looked around it, and it was at night, and the stars and the <laughs> everything come out, and it was like God saying, do you need more proof? <laughs> so let me ask you this. Um, do you have fear? Yeah. You have fear. Yeah, but not permanent. You're, not but you do have it. I have the fear of, of, of what I think is, is real, you know? Right. Like uh, sometimes uh, fear of losing my love, uh, the love of, say, my wife, uh, you know, because I'm getting older. And the fear is that I, eventually I won't be here and then she's going to find someone else. Oh. And, and so I got that, that jealous fear so you don't have perfect peace, and you have fear. You have doubt. Sometimes. Sometimes. And so what is the purpose of being with God or knowing God? If you, Oh, let me ask this. What does it feel like not to have perfect peace for you? What is that like? Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. And so why don't you go to perfect peace? Because, again, it's like trying because to learn. Because it's possible. No, but it's trying to learn when you're sleeping, you know. That's why a lot of times we can't sleep. Why? Because we're getting messages, <laughs> you know. We, we're getting our, 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 our thing. You, you only sleep in order to replenish the, the, the cells in your body, you know, because you can't have them going all the time. They need rest in order to build. Do, do you create your own thoughts? Yes. And how do you do that? With my brain. With but the, how do you do it, though? With God. No, tell me the steps of how you create your own thoughts. Create my own thoughts? Yes. Uh, I, I listen. See, a lot of people pray. I listen. Because God has been talking to me since I can remember. I was very young. And so if you create your own thoughts, why do you create thoughts that will give you fear or would give you doubt or would give you, why do you create can't those thoughts? Because you can't help it. When you're in love, you can't help it. But your fear <laughs> is not just being in love. You fear other things too. Oh, right? yeah, fear for your kids, fear for, for all sorts of things. <laughs> I mean, those, those kind of fears, you Excuse know. Me. But God uh, you know, did not. What I don't fear, what I don't fear is uh, uh, being um, being mocked or being teased or being. See, when right. I was a little kid, I grew up and and I experienced prejudice uh, because you were black. That's why. Well, because I was black, or because I was <laughs> brown, or because I was short, because <laughs> I was poor, because I, I looked native, all sorts of weird little things. But it was only these weird groups of people that, that were fearful of me, right. you know. I knew myself and every, all my friends and everybody else that knew me, you know, because to be, we need each other. That's the whole point. I got to ask you this. And sure. I mean, we could go on all day and all night, but I got to ask. Why don't you let go of thoughts so that you can have perfect peace? I don't want perfect peace. You don't want it. No. Oh, that's different than you don't want it. No. You won't get it. Okay, you like your hell. Turn the music up. You love your hell. Well, you learn a lot more in hell than you do in heaven, you know? And so you... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more going on in hell what? than there is in heaven. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And so you love your hell. Yeah, I do. I love you. Love my, your misery. Yeah. yeah I, so I then, that's do. why you don't have peace. You love your hell. That's right. Really? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No. I, okay. I well, wait, well, what's that saying? We can. You can rest when you die. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I wouldn't take that risk if I were you. But okay. <laughs>